Hey guys, about a year ago I did a video on the Boogie Boys' biggest hit, 1985's Fly Girl. And also, uh, two of the most prominent answer records to that record, uh, Pebbly Poo of the Mastodon Committee, her one and only solo uh, record, and also Jazzy D on the West Coast. But that's not all the answer records to Fly Girl. So today, I thought I'd hit this up with two more to kind of really just round out the story and bring it home. And this first one, actually, a lot of you guys in the credits, or in the comment section, rather, are way ahead of me. Uh, you're all saying, oh, you forgot about Sweet Trio. Sweet Trio also did one. So here it is, Sweet Trio, A Fly Guy. Now, Sweet Trio is pretty interesting. This is on Tommy Boy, again, 1985. They're all from 1985. Um, Sweet Trio is interesting because it's actually the first group, the first appearance of Sweet T, uh, who later on, you know, did, was on Profile and also uh, became Sugar for Def Jam. And, of course, her DJ was DJ Jazzy Joyce. DJ Jazzy Joyce, in fact, did DJ for the Sweet Trio, but she's not considered one of the three. The Sweet Trio is Sweet T, who actually but at that time went by the name Sweet Lee. So the same thing, just switch the L and the T. Uh, Betty Boo, not that Betty Boo who came from London. And an MC named MC Short Delight. So that was the trio. Then Jazzy Joyce was their DJ. However, on this particular record, uh, it's actually uh, produced and DJed by DJ Wiz. He did play that beat, Mr. DJ, and stuff with Chia Lobe. So that, you know, he was on Tommy Boy too, hence the connection. Uh, and this is their answer record to Fly Girl, naturally. So the Sweet Trio's Fly Guy isn't really a diss or anything like that. It's really not too much of a direct answer record. They don't ever mention the Boogie Boys or talk about the Boogie Boys or anything like that. Um, they basically just do the girl version of the Boogie Boys record. So where the Boogie Boys talked about their idea of fly girls, they talk about their ideal fly guys and what they like in guys. Uh, and then finally, the third verse is about sort of their ideal fly guy being MC, or rather DJ Wiz himself, which is kind of fun. Uh, instrumentally, it definitely echoes the original fly girl, like all the fly girl answer records do. I mean, certainly one of the signature elements of fly girl, in fact, the signature element is this very distinctive beat, the very distinctive samples, which I talked about in the last video. This does not use those samples, but they definitely sort of recreate it in the kind of murkier, watered down version. Uh, also, the hook is definitely, you know, the kind of the fly girl phrase being, or fly guy in this case, phrase being repeated in all the varying pitches, just like in the original. there's a bit of a bridgy breakdown kind of point where they bring in a bunch of samples and vocal samples and sound effects, uh, which isn't great, but it definitely makes things a lot more interesting. It kind of comes to life more towards the end. But overall, it's not, it's not only the best Fly Girl response, but it's also not the best Sweet Trio record. Actually, I would recommend this one nonstop. This is just sort of a much tougher record, and, I mean, you could tell... This is the one they made to put themselves on the map. They're like, hey, Fly Girl's big. Let's do Fly Guy and become famous off of that. And that's what it is. This is actually really, though, the one where they represent themselves. The MCs come out much tighter. It's just a stronger, better record all around.
still yet another Fly Girl answer record. This one's called A Fly Girl by Mademoiselle Boogie Girl Lace. I assume she just kind of put the boogie girl phrase into the middle of her name, like normally she performs as Madame, Mademoiselle Lace, and she just added that because she was responding to the boogie boys, but I can't really say for sure because this is actually her only record, so she's only known as Mademoiselle Boogie Boy in quotes Lace. Uh, the record is called A Fly Girls on Rapper's Rap Group, which is a West Coast label. Of course, they're naturally recreating instrumental to the original Fly Girl, uh, and again, without using the samples, so it has that very kind of watered down you know, knockoff feel to it. Uh, in fact, this, just objectively, this is always, always my least favorite rapper's rap uh, label records. It's always one of my favorite labels, actually. This is one of my least ones, again, because it's sort of just an answer record. Um, but it, interestingly, um, it also has a breakdown kind of at the end where they bring in new samples and new instrumentation, and that's where, again, it really picks up and comes to life. In fact, I think this one's even stronger than the Sweet Trio one. And Mademoiselle Lace herself, well, she's actually got a really high-pitched voice, the way a lot of uh, early female MCs did sort of before, I guess, they sort of found their footing. And if you think of, like, Anquiette uh, on Thrill the P before she kind of got to her more natural speaking voice and songs like Respect and her album and stuff like that, this kind of really squeaky high-pitched kind of voice. So she's got that going on. Um, but she's uh, she comes off lyrically pretty well on here. She definitely does mention the Boogie Boys on this one, so it's more of a direct answer record. Uh, the premise here is more that it's called A Fly Girl, and the premise is that she is a fly girl, i.e. the kind of girl that the Boogie Boys are talking about. In fact, she basically takes a lot of direct lyrical references. Remember in the first video how I talked about one of my favorite lines from the song was, you know, I'm going to say this whether you like it or not, I can't stand fluorescent socks, you know, and I talk about that. Well, she mentions that specifically. She's like, you know, I'm the kind of girl who wears fluorescent socks. So she's just always going through, you know, the more you're familiar with Fly Girl, actually, the more you'll pick up out of a Fly Girl. Um... So she's mostly, though, still just talking about how she is a fly girl. But then she also does kind of talk about how the boogie boys aren't fly enough to get a girl like her. You know, you guys ain't fly, I'm fly. Um, so it's a little bit of digs at the boogie boys, but it's very playful. It's mostly really just sort of about her. But it is a fun, cool record. It's definitely more of a direct answer record to Fly Girl, I would say, than the Sweet Trio one. Uh, and for that alone, I think it's more fun. records? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends where you're coming from. If you're a fan of Fly Girl, which is a classic record, and you're enjoying picking up all the fun answer records, which is a lot of the fun in these old records, is to kind of find all these crazy answer records and the variances, and, you know, what they do similar, what they do different, you know, I mean, the whole thing is really a lot of fun. So, to get Fly Girl and all the answer records is a lot of fun, so I recommend doing that if you're collecting that. But if you're not really, you know, high on Fly Girl itself, uh, or you like the original, you don't really care for, you know, you don't need all the answer records in your life. On their own right, they're not great records, necessarily. I would recommend the other Sweet Trio nonstop, though. That is really dope. A really good classic of, you know, a female group way back in 85 when there really weren't so many. Unfortunately, actually, there really aren't so many kind of historically throughout uh, the genre. Um, so I do recommend nonstop. The other ones I only really recommend depending on how you draw on Fly Girl. But frankly, I think it's a lot of fun. So that's it. I just wanted to share with you the other Fly Girls and kind of wrap up that story. So thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.